And we are live. Welcome to everyone who just got your notification uh, that we are going to be hopping on here with Gavin, Andrew, and a surprise guest from the Hawk Search team uh, to go through some of the uh, exciting capabilities and a demo of what the big commerce multi storefront uh, can do, especially when paired with Hawk Search. So, for those of you who did get your notification, we're just going to give it a probably another minute or so, uh, have, you know, a chance to get some coffee, grab some water, a snack, whatever you want. Um, and we're just going to go through, this is going to be a, a lunch and learn style, quick 30 minute walkthrough. And uh, if you have any questions or if you want to let us know where you are logging in from, we do have a lot of folks uh, all throughout the globe joining these webinars, and we love to know what time zone you are calling in from. Um, so we are going to go ahead and get everyone on screen here. Let's see. Okay. Hello. Right, Hello. we're all Hi. here. Uh, okay, so um, I want to just very quickly introduce everyone, and then we're going to get right into it. Uh, so we got Gavin. Our surprise guest here is Kyle from the Hawk Search team, and Andrew. So, real quickly, can you guys tell us uh, where you are logging in from, what you do at your company, and then we're just going to jump right into it. Yeah, I'll kick it off there. Um, so my name's Gavin. I'm the Enterprise Account Director for Hawk Search. Uh, I am logging in from Calgary, Alberta, up north. All right. And I am Kyle Mitzner. I'm a partner manager here at Hawk Search and with Bridgeline. Um, I get to work really closely between our product team and our sales team. And um, you'll see some of the demo we're going to go through is uh, a little bit generated by me and, and, and also with Andrew. Um, I'm also calling in from Calgary, Alberta, Canada. Uh, so two folks from the great white north. <laughs> and I think, Andrew, you look like you're also in Canada. <laughs> I'll let you do Perfect, your Canada. Yeah, this is in the northern yeah. Rockies, actually. So actually, this yeah. photo was taken about 15 miles from the Canadian border. So that, that counts. Oh, yeah, that there counts. you go. It Close counts. enough. Yeah. So I'm Andrew Riggins, and founder and owner of O-Bundle. Uh, we're a big commerce-focused design and development agency. And I'm calling from Beaverton, Oregon, just outside of Portland. Um, so yeah, happy to be here. Awesome. I think we're just going to kick it right off um, with go ahead and overview of this webinar. So we're going to tell you what, what the big commerce multi storefront capabilities are. Uh, basically, this means instead of having to have a single control panel for every storefront instance you have. So let's say we have acme.com and wholesale.acme.com. Previously, you needed two separate big commerce control panels for this. Now you can just have one big commerce control panel, one set of data, one settings one system to log into, but have multiple websites that users can go to. And we'll dive into the details about the capabilities and the nuances of each of those uh, moving forward. Um, some of the, uh, oh, sorry, just back one more slide. Yeah, <laughs> I got a little detail on the first one. So the second little bullet point here, we're going to understand the pain points of why you would want to move to multi-storefront. If I have multiple control panels on a day-to-day -day basis, how is this going to affect um, my productivity getting orders out the door? Um, and then lastly, we're going to talk about how a third party search solution like Hawk Search can really be utilized inside of a multi storefront environment. All right, so what is multi storefront? So let's say I have, like I mentioned before, multiple segments for my company or multiple regions or a reason just to have separate websites for my customers. So having just one e commerce uh, URL can be difficult to manage when I have multiple segments of customers. So let's say I have a wholesale customer segment, or maybe even I want to do special products just for one really big customer I have. And maybe that customer occupies 10% of all my revenue, and I want to really have a, a dedicated buying um, portal for them. That's really what multi storefront is for, is to have one backend system with multiple websites that users can go to. So this reduces training. Um, for your team, this reduces fatigue, just logging in and realizing what website am I in? I can't remember which control panel I'm in. There's just one system to log into. So really multi storefront is just to summarize is having one control panel with multiple storefronts coming out of it. So I already kind of went through most of these, uh, but we have one product, uh, one common product catalog. And just for the multiple storefronts to get into the weeds on that too, you can have unique themes for these. So all these different storefronts don't need to have clones of the same theme. That's really the beauty of this is we can have different themes 
for each storefront. And now you can make them as different or as similar as possible. You want to save a little bit of budget and just kind of clone those themes and have little differences or have completely bespoke uh, themes for every single storefront. Uh, price lists are also unique per storefront. So Big Commerce is uh, has a feature called price lists that allows you to do really dynamic, custom, complex pricing for customer groups inside of a single storefront. And you can have multiple segments of these price lists for each storefront. So if we, obviously, if we have a wholesale storefront versus a B2C storefront, we're going to want different price lists. Um, I also touched on already this, that we segregate B2B and B2C. So you can have multiple storefronts for that. And these are managed like any other channel in big commerce. So if you're familiar with the channel manager in big commerce, we have channels for Walmart, eBay, Amazon, you know, all the marketplaces out there. And so these multiple storefronts just live there in that same UI that you're used to. Um, really this one, the last bullet point here is one of the most important is maintaining the current post-purchase app integrations. And what that means in plain English is I have things connected to my storefront that help me process orders, ship station, something that prints a label, something that goes out to an ERP. What do I do with that data after the order comes in? And if I have multiple storefronts, I have to connect each of those stores, if I have multiple control panels rather, I have to connect each of those control panels to my integration. Now I have five integrations for ship station or my ERP or NetSuite or things like that versus just there's now one plug with one hole that it goes into and one integration. All right, so who's this for? Kind of already touched on this a little bit too, but um, really for for uh, merchants that have multiple brands is a great use case too. Let's um, let's take somebody who has maybe a, a corporate company that has multiple fashion brands underneath it. Maybe we have a, a men's fashion brand, maybe focusing on outdoor. Then we have maybe a women's brand or a child's brand. It would be advantageous to have one control panel, one catalog for those and one integration system for those, but then we have multiple storefronts for each of these. And you can even make them kind of tied together too, where they're separate URLs, but then in the, navi in the, in the navigation and the theme, we can link to them to make the experience quite seamless. Going back to what I mentioned before about having themes that are different, but similar. So we know that they're the same corporate website, but we can tell that they're separate brands. Um, same thing with multi-segment, mentioned that before, you can have wholesale versus B2C with one control panel. Um, also pretty cool, use case for this is doing multi-region. Um, yeah, so let's say I'm selling in the US or selling in Canada or selling in different, even geographic regions inside the United States. And I wanna have different bespoke websites. Let's say you're an equipment company that sells you know, large scale construction equipment. You might wanna have a site that's just for the Southeast or just for the West or just for the North because you have those pieces of equipment literally located in those regions. So it's a great, uh, multi storefront is also great for having use case for multi-region as well. Um, so international growth. So let's talk about the B2B edition. So this is kind of a two part. Uh, we're talking about two different really cool things about big commerce in this webinar. And one is multi storefront and one is the B2B edition. And as of May 1st, they're merging into one I, I concept and idea that's going to be called the B2B edition. So B2B edition allows for all sorts of awesome, complex use cases for selling wholesale, selling B2B. This would be creating invoices, creating custom quotes, creating a buyer portal, having super admins where you can have um, things more on the company level rather than the customer level. So let's think about on a normal e-commerce site, it's very customer centric. It's very merchant customer. And that's really the relationship we have in a typical e-commerce setup. But that's not how B2B or wholesale uh, clients are gonna use the system. They have, let's say, somebody buying from Acme co Company, um, let's say John Smith Inc. has five salesmen. Well, each of those salesmen may have different permissions or different statuses in the company, different things to do. And B2B Edition lets you get really into the weeds on allowing certain people at the company access to certain things that really help their day be more productive. Um, that goes to the last bullet point here, simplifies processes is what I was trying to get at. So really simplifying the way that you manage your products, manage your orders, manage your pricing, and that the way customers can purchase from you as well. We get a yeah. bit of a benefit, a little extra feature that we're going to cover today is the yeah. B2B edition. Yeah, Very over exciting. to you guys. Yeah, yeah, per yeah. yeah perfect. I, I can jump in here. And this is really what we wanted to highlight here is, is just kind of to touch base on maybe if you're not familiar with Hawk Search and our partnership with Big Commerce, um, this slide's really just to kind of give you a really high level look of what we're all about. So. You know, Hawk Search's main goal is to take any of this traffic that we do see coming to your site. We obviously want to create that user experience, that relevancy to help improve those conversions. 
and we really want to make sure that we're increasing your average order volume. So Hawk Search really in a nutshell is just a leading AI search, merchandising, recommendation, personalization search platform. So we have a couple stats here. You know, we're managing roughly 500 million searches a month. We've done close to probably just about 3,000 implementations. And we've just got a really great ecosystem. So partners like Big Commerce, uh, pre-built connectors to help us really connect into these multi-storefronts. So this is what this slide's really touching on. And this will really bring us into the next slide as well, which is some of the really key areas from a feature set that's going to help that customer uh, UX throughout the, the, the multi-storefront kind of experience. And I'm going to touch really on the B2B side of things is that's kind of what we're focusing in on today. And these are kind of probably the top separating factors why people choose Hawk Search. Um, the first one's going to be the machine learning, something that we have a really good uh, handle on is, you know, we're, we learn from impressions. Uh, we learn from, you know, the personalization journey that the customers go on. What are they clicking on? But the ability to track all of this as well uh, helps kind of make the, the whole process smoother, uh, as well as we have four layers of, uh, of AI involved into this, which can be turned on, turned off, can influence buyer journeys. Uh, so it really makes for a great experience. Um, and then the next kind of icon, there's the advanced capabilities. So B2B searches a little bit differently than B2C. We're often dealing with, you know, large SKU numbers or complex SKU numbers with, with spaces or, or numbers and all sorts of things. So, so Hawk Search has a really good handle on returning complex SKU searches. Uh, customer entitlements, customer inventories, different locations. How do we manage all that? So that can all be handled through the workbench on the Hawk search side, which is great, as well as kind of a federated search. So, you know, you see a lot of this in, in the B2B space. You've got um, manuals, you've got blogs, you've got learning uh, documents that people want to search as well. So we can manage that in that user experience as well. Uh, the next one in is our unit of measure conversion, which is very unique to Hawk search. Um, this was normally previously managed through synonyms and creating these kind of off lists where you're trying to is someone writing inches in quotations or are they spelling it out and so we've got this kind of a really unique feature into hawk search which helps convert these unit of measures so it can really return those accurate results for your customers as well um, not only that we can use that from like a data normalization aspect so if you have a super large catalog you have lots of suppliers giving you different descriptions of what your products can be, we can use all of that through our data normalization to continually return those accurate results for you guys. And then when we're looking at the multi-store front, you know, you have your obviously your global rules that you can apply through all through through one workbench. But what really becomes cool with Hawk Search is if you have your individual stores separated out, you have the ability to market and merchandise all those separately outside of the global rules. So you get into our recommendation strategies. Um, we have 17 of those. Um, six of those can be completely personalized. So that could be via login or an account. So, you know, can really create a really cool buying experience for your customers uh, on different storefronts can be managed. It could be geographically focused. It could be contractually focused. You really have that freedom to, to create that experience. And then the last portion of this uh, event feature set that we think pairs really well with the multi storefront, it's going to be the, the dynamic marketing. So kind of that dread, you know, that boost and burying capability, uh, merchandising campaigns, landing pages, these can all be done on individual store levels uh, to really kind of get the most out of each location and the most interaction from your customers. Well, I couldn't have said it better myself, Gaff. That was great. That was great. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I'll go over, I'll kind of tackle this one. Um, this is more or less the same slide as what Andrew had explained. So I'll cover it pretty quick. Um, but this is covering the benefits of hog search within multi storefront. Um, and really, a lot of these uh, benefits are the same as just multi storefront in itself. Um, hog search, uh, as of November, I believe, is actually multi storefront compatible. Uh, so we get these same benefits. We're getting one catalog, uh, which can be leveraged across maybe one index or two indexes. I'll, I'll kind of review that in the next slide. Um, but there's there's many ways that we can drive these products and these different catalogs um, into one or more uh, Hawk search engines. Um, and in the same way that you can have two different storefronts, you can actually leverage Hawk search UI templates, or you could leverage an SDK um, and drive those to two different storefronts. Uh, you could reuse some components, you could 
uh, make them completely different, that's totally up to you. Um, price list, well, uh, I'm not going to touch too much on this because a bit of a spoiler alert, we are doing uh, another webinar in April and we're going to actually have some live pricing uh, being fed from one of our partners, uh, pros. But there is many ways that we can also handle the price lists, um, whether it's a third party app, whether it's through big commerce, uh, many ways to do it. So I think if you guys kind of tune in to the April webinar, you'll get a, an even better example. Um, and getting into the segregation of B2B and B2C, um, we actually have a demo that uh, Andrew is going to showcase for us today. Um, and so I'm also going to leave this one alone a little bit, but the use case of our demo site is really like if you were a, a B2B distributor um, and you wanted to maybe launch a B2C site, which we've actually seen uh, quite a few use cases for, um, we're, we're basically going to show you exactly what the, that would look like with multi-store front um, and in a live demo site. So, um, and then the last kind of piece is obviously, like I said, Hog Search is multi storefront compatible. You can handle it with uh, the Hog Search pre built integration. Uh, you can install it multiple times on the multi storefront. You could have it running to two different indexes. Um, and so it's, it's really, really cool, really powerful that way. Many ways to showcase how it could be done. Um, and I'll actually explain it in the next slide if you don't mind switching over. So I have two examples here. And really, this is kind of just the, the brink or the tip of the iceberg. Um, there's multiple ways that you could actually handle this indexing. And I know this looks a bit complicated, but I promise you it's easier <laughs> than it looks. <laughs> yeah. Um, Unless you've gone straight, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, I'll start with the example too, but you could have a single catalog, but let's say you wanted to different looks and feels. Maybe you wanted one for Canada, one for uh, the United States, but still the same catalog. Well, you could split that catalog up into two different indexes. Um, and then you could have that feeding back into two different storefronts. The other example is actually kind of a two-piece example. Um, example one at the top there. You could have one catalog with two channels. So catalog one, catalog two. Uh, they could feed to two different indexes and you could apply Hawk search rules differently. You could have different boosting happening, you could have different merchandising rules hitting, and those could be going to each big commerce store. Um, and then it's almost like a bonus example here is we actually can control both of those other indexes with what we're calling a control engine. Um, so you could set maybe some specific rules in the smaller engines in the index one, index two, and then have the hog search control engine actually overwrite or overrule some of those uh, features. So there's a lot of ways to do it. There's a lot of ways to send data to Hawk Search and then also send it back to Big Commerce. Um, and I think it's a pretty powerful example. And we'll uh, probably get straight into the demo, Andrew, if you're ready, and showcase yeah. how we can actually handle this. Yeah, it sounds great. And then also to chime on that a little bit too, the, the paradigm of having global versus specific is goes throughout all multi-storefront big commerces as well. So let's say we're getting into some really detailed nuanced setting, there's gonna be a checkbox for global or specific for this channel. So really you don't have to configure every single thing for every single storefront, it will inherit the global just like in Hawk Search. And, but if you wanna get specific on it, you can. So uh, right. yeah, let's dive in and, um, oh, I guess I'm waiting on Victoria to, to move to my screen. Mario Sharon. Oh, whoa. All right. So, <laughs> yeah. We went to a different dimension there. Yeah. The first seconds, I think. We're in the mountains. Yeah. We're in the mountains. Yeah. <laughs> looking good now? Yeah. Yeah, we're looking good now. Yeah, we're good. Perfect. So this is just a back end of Big Commerce, a uh, Big Commerce store. And um, so let's, what, everything is under channel manager as far as multi storefront goes. So let's dive into that first. We'll go to channel manager. Like I mentioned before, all the other marketplaces are here too. So if I sold on Amazon or, um, Buy with Prime, Facebook, eBay, Walmart, these are all right here. Um, and my storefronts are listed at the top here and I can have up to five stencil based storefronts. So stencil is the big commerce theme engine. And then I can have up to 15 headless storefronts. So let's say I wanted to run one of my storefronts on a bespoke headless stack using Node.js or Next.js or some other um, front end framework. I could go ahead and do that and but still use big commerce as my back end. So that's really cool for really interesting kind of bespoke sites that um, maybe you don't need all of the stencil theme front front framework. And I say you just wanted to be have a page that's just like a single 
a single um, a single page website where it's just a one add to cart. You could do that super easily with headless and with multi storefront. So we went ahead and set up two uh, themes inside of here. Both of these are themes that O Bundles made. One of them is not yet in the theme store. It's Houston, but we do have Austin, this B2C uh, theme in the theme store. So we'll kind of go ahead and just um, dive into here too. So you can open up each of these separately. So we'll go ahead and open up the the B2B one. So we have a left-hand side navigation here. This is really good if you have a larger product catalog that has a lot of top-level categories. For this demo site, we just have two top-level categories, but if you can imagine you know, 10 or 12 here, that's listed much more efficiently going on the left side here versus having them all going across the top. Um, so that's why we have this layout for this specific um, B2B theme. And let me just show off a couple of the cool Hawk Search features while we're inside of this particular storefront. So, and Andrew, um, you can you yeah. can certainly blame me for uh, ruining some of the UI components of your your beautiful. Theme. Oh no, it looks yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, All right, so Kyle gave me a couple of example searches I want to show to you guys. So let's say I'm searching for 600 volts. I'm gonna type in 600 V because that's what it says on my abbreviation on my sheet, you know. And uh, let's say I want to type in, I just type in 600 capital V. We're gonna get the same results. And let's say I type in maybe 600 space volt. It's going to get the same thing. If I just type in volts, because it's really plural, 600 volts, we're also going to get the same thing there too. So um, Hawk Search has uh, some matching algorithms that I will uh, not pretend to know all the fancy terminology for, but uh, it can basically smart search and uh, ex is expecting these things. And so it can provide matches to you, even if you're not typing in the exact query. Yeah, Andrew, that's that's a, that's a really good example of the unit of measure it, it, it in, in, in working there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so let's also let's say I don't have the exact skew. Let's say I have a really complicated skew like this one. Uh, of course, this is the proper skew, so it's going to give me an exact result. But let's say I just kind of mistype it and do this. Same thing. I don't have to be exactly precise. I can even mix and match here. Like I guess just showed, and it's all going to give the same result. Um, I can even take out the spaces. I'll remove dashes and add spaces. Yep, so that'll work. Um, and let me show you one more example of the um, of the unit of measure. Very really cool one here. So let's say I type in half an inch. Well, in America, that's how we call it, but up in Canada, we call them Gavin, <laughs> they might type in. Yeah, they're all metric. They yeah, might, we like, yeah, we like metric. 13 millimeters. Yeah. I don't think our electricians actually use metric, but we'll pretend yeah, for this I think use they, case. Yeah, we buy, we we buy most things in the yeah. U.S., and so uh, their job is yeah. harder. They probably have a mix of everything mixed together. Of everything. The American yeah. one is like, eh, I just have half inch, but Canadians have to deal with both of them probably. You know? so, yeah, it's a bit of a nightmare. Super, super helpful for any Canadian buyers is that I have 13 millimeters, but let's say in my toolkit I have a half inch. Well, it's, it's going to do the conversion here for you. And make sure that you know and this is a pretty you know crude uh example but multiply this out times an eighth of an inch a 12 and an of a 16th of an inch you know you don't want to have to do the math of what a 16th of an inch is to millimeters on the fly when you're searching for something let the algorithm let the let the engine take care of that for you yeah absolutely and we have a bit of a simple use case here i mean our, our product catalog for our demo site is pretty simple but when you do get to a complicated product catalog, uh, these types of features are pretty critical to make sure whoever's on your site is finding the right part. Exactly. Yeah. So just imagine this exploded to a catalog of 20,000 products, how, how useful it would be. Um, uh, yeah. Kyle and I didn't have the time to put 24,000 products on here. So uh, <laughs> yeah. just you know, we can use our imaginations for that. Yeah. Um, Kyle, anything else I should show on, on this theme? No, no, I think you're good. I mean, this is this is utilizing a rapid UI framework. I'll just call it out. Um, it's not quite, you know, it doesn't look quite as beautiful yeah. as your theme, but yeah. um, you know, it kind of gets the search results and there shows you what it can do. So yeah, thanks for touching um, on that. So, yeah, so all of this is completely customizable via CSS. So like Kyle said, we just drop this in. It doesn't perfectly match the theme, but a developer like ourselves could totally make this look seamless inside of your theme, no matter what what branding or what color scheme or fonts, or whatever you're using, the CSS is customizable here to, to match your, your styling. Um, well, cool, let me jump over to the other theme we have. So let's say, uh, I, I'm glad you gave that example, Kyle, of a B2B site that sells B2C, because that's actually more common than you might think. So, it's definitely, definitely trending, for yeah, sure. There are yeah. tons of, I think I'm gonna totally butcher this stat, but something like around 50% of all companies in the US are B2B, they support, what is eventually B2C. So 
there's like my business, Obundle, all we do is B2B, but we provide services. And there's plenty of companies that provide products to other businesses, but they're dipping their toe in B2C. So you think it'd be the other way around, but really there's a lot of wholesale companies that thought, you know what? There's the internet, there's e-commerce. I can create an easy to sell B2C portal, which 10, 15 years ago, if I was to jump into B2C, I would have to consider making a physical storefront or doing all the things that come with actually selling merchandise in person. But now that we have all the great e-commerce capabilities of 2023, a whole a typical wholesale company can now really, with very little investment and effort, pivot into the B2C marketplace as well. Take all their systems and salespeople and everything and just start up another, another channel here with a little bit of effort and lots of possible reward. So to kind of dive into how you do that is you would set up another storefront in BigCommerce, pick the same theme you have or a different one. We're going to choose the Austin theme because it's more uh, B2C based. And you could even segment product, part of your catalog into this storefront. So I don't have to have everything that I have in my B2B store. I can have just a small amount in here. Um, our theme also allows for drag and drop editing of content. So if I want to change out this electrician, changing this bulb with another image, uh, the marketing person at the company can go ahead and do this without needing to consult any developers. They can just go into a drag and drop interface, put in the new image, hit save, they're done. So there's a lot of cool merchandising tools around our theme um, when it comes to even comes to MSF. Um, so yeah, this is more of a, like I said, more of a theme dedicated to a B2C buyer. There's a lot more sections for content and um, brand confidence building, like we call it, versus more a simple straight buying experience on, on, this, on this theme, on this other one. Um, kind of get into the weeds here on MSF and, and uh, B2B edition because I want to show you guys some cool stuff here is what I mentioned a minute ago about the product splitting. So if you can see here, I have my uh, complete product catalog and then it shows me which channels these products are assigned to. So this flush mount ceiling light is assigned to both channels. This building wire is just assigned to one and you can go on down the list here. These are very easy to edit too. I'm going to just click on that and assign which channel I want it to be on. So just a matter of just a couple of clicks. I could also put this on the B2C store. Next time I reload that B2C store, this new product is on there. Um, so it's very useful for segmenting product catalogs uh, for, for different purposes. And, um, and, a, ver yeah. and a very cool feature too, Andrew, while I was playing around with that is the bulk loading capability. So if you do have a very large catalog, um, it doesn't have to be so individually separated out, which I think is a very cool feature. Yeah. You can kind of mass edit which ones are going to be yeah. sent to, you know, the B2C store or the B2B store. Uh, exactly. Really quick and easy. Yep. Yeah, the import export feature are ones that we leverage all the time for our clients. So whether you want to use the import feature via here, via spreadsheet, whether you want to edit in bulk in the UI, we can do that here. Oops, that's the export button. <laughs> uh, or you want to bulk edit inside of the control panel here, um, or you can edit individually and go into each product. So like I said, it's just like a spreadsheet. It's super easy to edit this in bulk. And also um, just to add to that, Andrew, I know we're getting really close on time already, but um, you know, if you pick, depending on which uh, channel you pick, that will decide which ones get indexed in the Hawk search side where. So um, it's kind of doing two things at once there. Good point. Yeah, I didn't think about that. Yeah, so, so if, you, if you assign it to a certain storefront, Hawk Search will pick that up and put it into the index for you. Um, one thing, I, because we're close on time, I wanted to dive into the B2B edition of Big Commerce because that's super awesome to pair with multi storefront. Is um, is this? So we have a really easy to use dashboard here that lays out all the companies that are assigned to your store. Like I mentioned before, we have super admins. We have quoting, which is a really cool feature. Um, so let's say I'm buying a huge purchase, maybe fifty, hundred thousand dollars as a customer. I'm probably going to want to try and negotiate with the merchant. So you can add to quote and you can try and get a custom price or you can, as a merchant, give custom pricing to your customers. Um, so this will definitely increase conversions and average order value versus somebody thinking it's a hundred grand. I don't want that to walk away. But if you can sell it for 99,000, I'm sure you would. Um, complex invoice management here. So you can issue an invoice and get it paid later. The, the customer doesn't have to pay directly on the checkout, which is a big, big thing for wholesale. Um, and then the rest of the UI here, we can dive into, there's complex rules for permissions, users, sales staff, settings, uh, the whole gambit. So I know I rushed that right at the end. So I wanted to take some time, <laughs> some time to wrap up for Victoria. You got it in, yeah. yeah. I, think, uh, I think the next webinar, we might need more time. I think yeah. so.
And I think we're also going to yeah. be building out the demo set a lot more. Like I mentioned, we're going to oh, yeah. uh, include the real-time pricing um, and the discounting uh, through pros, which is really cool. So yeah, this is just, this uh, is a, a brief tease today. It's a tease today. Yeah, maybe we'll get your two hundred thousand products in. I, I was like, I don't think yeah. I can fill in a half an hour, and you guys kept telling me you're going to go over and sure yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, sure enough, easily. Yeah, it happened. Well, uh, speaking of which, we are now exactly at thirty minutes. So, uh, just wanted to quickly thank you guys, um, and thank also you. Kyle thank did you. mention there is a another webinar happening next month. Uh, so for those of you who weren't able to join us live for this webinar today, we are sending out the recording with a super helpful recap blog of all of the elements that was covered today. Uh, and then part of that email will be uh, the registration for next month's webinar, or I guess actually, it's April now. Oh, it's this month. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This month. Yeah. Time is flying. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I just wanted to, again, uh, pop back on here. Thank you guys for running through this. Yeah, All really exciting capabilities. And uh, until our next webinar, we'll uh, we'll see you guys next time. Until next time. Appreciate it, guys. Good. Until next time. Right. See you later, everybody. Bye. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye.